What up, cunts? It is Pardon the Ignorance Podcast. We're back again this week, live on Twitch TV for audio list- only listeners everywhere podcasts are- can be found. Uh, and YouTube, if you want to watch this tomfoolery. So, this week, I'm here. And longtime guest. What's up, Chris? What's up, buddy? Cheers. What's up, man? Uh, yes. Cheers. Go the American way. We're going American today. And we're both wearing Ohio stuff today. I have a Brutus a Buckeye shirt on. Yeah, You're repping orange. Not, You're rocking orange for the Bengals. No fucking rolling hard from where you come from going back to your homegrown roots man i get you that's good Uh, i like it no let's not Ohio looks great on you (laughs) fuck you it's like you gained 45 pounds (laughs) (laughs) Uh, although i i'm talking shit uh for our audio uh only listeners um i just like to Chris likes to talk a lot of shit about Ohio, and I have to bitch check him and remind him that's where he's from. That is not where I'm from. Definitely not. I lived there for a long time, but no, that's not where I'm from, dude. Being no. in that part of Ohio is like getting AIDS. You don't get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> like. Not even Magic Johnson, not even Magic Johnson can do that, dude. So you're definitely from Cincy. Uh, <laughs> God damn, that's funny. Uh, um, no, but uh, for our audio only listeners, Chris is actually wearing a pretty sick camo uh, Air Jordan sweatsuit. I like it. Thank it you. Looks, it's cool. I like it a lot, actually. It was hard to fucking find. No, I bet. I can see that flying off the shelves. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so. Jesus. <laughs> oh, man. I made some notes and now I'm all fucked up. What'd you do? Take your notes and write them over the other notes? No, I kind of mixed them up. That's all right. So. Uh, <laughs> typical pardon the ignorance fashion. Uh, Bobby's wasted. Um, <laughs> although I did hit record this week, so uh, uh, if you guys listen to the episode directly before this one, that isn't the real episode. There was a whole episode that went on 50 minutes before that one actually started. Uh, so and it awesome. was a banger of an it was a banger of an episode. I just didn't hit record, so our Twitch live streamers got to see all of it. Uh, just nobody else. <laughs> so that was basically like your guys' uh, bonus content. Um, so uh, also, there's one thing I do want to mention. Uh, Pardon the Ignorance podcast does have its own fan page on uh facebook and i created a community group um this past week what's cool about that is our listeners you can join it and they can actually um post ideas right and it's basically just like a you know like a message board uh where we can just interact with one another and bounce ideas off of each other and listen to uh actual feedback from the listeners and viewers so Mm -hmm. uh please join uh, I want to, I'm off work this coming up week. So I plan on doing quite a bit on the production side that I've been slacking on. So I want to move us a little forward. Cool. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm going to start off this topic tonight. Go for it. So I was talking on Twitch earlier that we're old and I've realized it and I've accepted it. So last week. Do you know what a fucking yeah? Like, do you know what a topper is? Thirty-one, aren't you? No, fuck no. I'm thirty-seven, and I'm a grandpa, so I'm allowed to 
feel fucking old. See, and you're trying to tell bitches you're not from Cincinnati. Fuck off. Oh my god. <laughs> that is the most Cincinnati thing I've ever heard. I'm 37 and a grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> You just need a new port uh, in your hand, and that would have been like fucking a dude. <laughs> uh, no, do you know what a topper is? Because there's a lot of Americans that don't. You've been in Germany long enough. Okay, uh, you obviously don't know what that is either. I don't. It's know like what an it's extra. Topper. It's like an extra mattress. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, a, a mattress topper. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so. My wife and I. Have been I was thinking you were like, talking about like gay stuff, like a top or a bottom. I didn't know no. if it was like something weird. No. Hold on, no. Chris. Hold on. Oh shit! Really? Stay as you are. Oh my god! I wish I could screenshot this. God damn it! Screenshot. If you can screenshot how you are right now, please do. Why? Hold on. Uh, you'll see it when I put, just do not move no matter there, what I you do. It. Hold on. I got to get it. What the fuck are you seeing? So where your head is, if you look mm -hmm. along the sides, it looks like you are rocking the most bitchin' mullet ever. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so awesome. Oh. Oh my god, I was jealous as oh. hell for a second. <laughs> so I used to, so fun fact about that too. I used to have one down to my ass when I was like a little kid. Yes. <laughs> I think on one of the episodes I actually showed you guys, uh one of my buddies back home has a mullet currently. Nah, then I wasn't here for that one. Oh, I'll have to I'll have to screenshot and send uh -huh. it to you. It is glorious it is absolutely <laughs> glorious and it's like dude i i would rock a mullet it'd be fun as hell i see him all over the place like over by us like the part of germany where dave and i are at i see a lot of them like, yeah okay yeah it's like a, it's a typical thing here it seems like yeah but these are like the people of like our name dieter just... yeah but here's the thing though like these people that have this uh mullet like they got it when it was cool 30 years ago and they just and they just kept it <laughs> never got rid of it <laughs> uh, so it's pretty cool um sorry so go on Your mattress toppers no, what I was, yes so my wife and i have been talking for like easily over a year and a half now but never fucking went out and bought one mm -hmm. last week when i was off i was like you know what fuck it I don't care. We're going and we're going to get one. We're going today. We're going to try them out and we're going to buy one. Dude, I have never slept better in my life. Really? <laughs> no. We went to uh Danish Bettenlager. Yeah. And got it from there. Mm -hmm. Fucking in love. Like all I want to do is just lay in my bed and go to sleep. <laughs> nice. Very nice. We um we used to have some toppers. I don't like them. So we but got do you have like do you have like the the German typical German mattress? No. You've got the American one one mattress? Uh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh we used to have like the German stuff like where I had a mattress, Mila had a mattress, mine was harder, hers was a bit soft like we had it passed like for each person, right? And then mm -hmm. uh, they still suck. So we put toppers on them. They were garbage. Uh, have you ever heard of like those Casper mattresses uh -uh. in America? If you Google, it's like a massive. They're like one of the biggest number one mattresses in the States or whatever, especially like a few years ago. Um, there was a run in the deal over here for this for the same thing. So we got one. Man. Expensive. And it, it was cool. Like, I was like, oh, you know, this is pretty nice for a little bit. Then after maybe a couple months, I was like, this thing sucks. And mm -hmm. we've been stuck with it for years. So we're actually, uh, we actually found a really, really, really nice whole bed set. But at Ikea, they have some really nice mm -hmm. uh, mattresses. Once you get, like, into the higher end ones, like, you're paying, you know, like, 
a little over two grand, but it's yeah. nice. Um, so I think that's the route that we're going to go, but that's good. Yeah, man. I was, I was a little bit too, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to say that cause we, we still want to be able to, to film. So what? I was a, I was a little too what you say that I am my religious belief. Oh, I wasn't okay. Gonna yeah, <laughs> you were you were I pinching was, your pennies. I get it. I, was, I wasn't going to go out because they had one there. Just the topper alone was a fucking thousand euros. Yeah, there, there like, shit gets I'm up like, there. Fuck, dude, we really don't need that much. I and mean, the you thing can is feel that it was better. And the thing is, you went to like the most expensive place Germany has for that kind of shit. Yeah, but I also know that they they like are known for making yeah. those too. Yeah. So we felt like the difference. I say the the top three. Mm-hmm. So we felt the the thousand euro one, and we're like, yeah, okay, you can definitely tell it's worth it. Yeah. Let me try the other two. Yeah, let and me try really the one for forty five. Yeah, it was like I, th- I think that we ended up paying like five hundred for ours. Not I'm bad. like, let me let me try that. I'm like, okay, there's not that much of a difference between this one and fucking the top quality one. Like nah, until we'll you try sleep this. on it for a month or so. Yeah, but we'll see. Yeah, that's cool, all I though. care about is right now I can fucking sleep. <laughs> yeah, there there you go, man. That's awesome. I'm a shit sleeper anyway, so I think maybe if we get a new bed, that might hopefully will change it, but. Mm -hmm. that's how i've been too for the longest now like it's not really sleeping all the way through and yeah i never sleep all the way through but i don't think i've slept past maybe 7 30 7 45 in the last Mm -hmm. 10 years i'm usually and that's like for me that's like if i go to bed fucking blackout drunk at three o'clock in the morning i'll wake up at 7 45 uh but if it's just like a regular night. Like if I go to bed, say like midnight, one o'clock in the morning, like mm-hmm. nothing, I'm up at five and it sucks. The other night I woke up, it was seriously the first time that I could not see shit in our bedroom <laughs> at all. I walked into our closet that we had, started cussing. My wife is just fucking out. She yeah. did not hear anything. I'm like, how the fuck did you not hear me when I walked into it and go, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They uh I don't know, man. Women they can sleep. That's a that's a funny thing though. Like you put a kid anywhere in that house, they hear like the slightest sounds. Yeah. And like major shit, like or something that when it comes to you, I didn't hear it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I bet you didn't. <laughs> Dick. Uh, but you know the things we do to put up with them bleeders huh chris i don't know about that anymore (laughs) it's cool man you can say it it's cool uh holy shit (laughs) oh they left who was feet in there feet was in there Oh, damn it, man. Like, I have wow. a thing over here on my left. Like, I, it notifies me. Mm-hmm. That figures. God damn it, Fee. Left, it, left again without saying that fucking word. Yeah. Uh. So... This whole thing with uh, toppers and stuff and being old, was that it? You just you got you're old, so now you got a yeah, that bed was topper. It. That was like that was like the highlight of my fucking week. <laughs> that was seriously. Speaking of highlights oh, yes. of the week, ooh, and with a awesome. GoPro. I was just about to say that. Hey guys, what's up? What's going what's up, on, man? man? <laughs> Chris, are you a BA man? Fuck no. Looks like our office. No. <laughs> okay. So you just have nothing on your walls? No, not in this one. Not yet. I wish I could have that, man. We got a bunch of silly lady and kid shit up plastered everywhere. Yeah, his wife won't <laughs> let him hang that kind of stuff up. He's been trying, but she won't let him. 
No, I need to hang something else up. So, so Randall will fucking enjoy this. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff, man. Freedom juice. Hell yeah. I tapped in the Rockies. <laughs> yeah, I drink that one. <laughs> that shit's good where I'm at in the summer, man, because it's so hot. You can't drink a, a real beer. Or at least you mm-hmm. can't drink it for 12 hours like I do. So, <laughs> Challenge accepted. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> You've never drank with me, man. <laughs> as long as it's literally not piss, I'm good to go. Yeah, same here, man. These Germans are all like connoisseurs of their beer. And half the time, I don't even think theirs is that great. They're just, you know, Germans. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's what they do, man. Germans Fucking are perfect. Germans. <laughs> so, uh, actually, it's cool that you joined us. Um, for our listener, right now, we're streaming live on Twitch TV. I'm recording the video version of this for YouTube and the audio version. Uh, today, Randall sent me something on Instagram. You want to go into a little bit of detail what that is or uh, the dick pics or <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, oh that, I, yeah, I, you, <laughs> I'm not like your guys's uh, community. There's no don't ask, don't tell here. So whatever y'all want to do, <laughs> I was listening to y'all's uh, last, last or second to last podcast. You guys were talking about gay chicken. Yeah. Yeah, I'd that's, fucking that's, crush it. That's no, I don't know, man. It's you need supervision to play it with us because it's it gets out of hand. <laughs> I have no shame whatsoever. Like I'll that's fucking... like Paul. That's how you end up actually making out with dudes. Just yeah. to the point. <laughs> like you'll pull your dong out and be like, "Holy fuck, this dude is about to touch my dangle," and I won't break eye contact the entire time. I'll make it super weird. Uh well, I mean, yeah, it's not gay without on- eye contact. So, yeah, See, I said that before, and people people didn't fucking understand that at all. It's only gay if there's eye contact, or you push back. If you push back, then it's no. It's over See, two. we're <laughs> you guys need to slap your fathers because the real rule is it's only gay once it's over six inches. <laughs> okay. That's, That's why like Chris the... has a thing for Asians. That's like the paradox with uh Bro. <laughs> with two guy two guy one girl threesomes. Yeah. It's like do you keep your yeah. eyes open and risk accidentally touching each other or is it like forced eye contact the whole time to oh, oh, I know mitigate that Bobby would do that. Oh, Bobby would we definitely have a... do that fucking like hard awkward eye contact like hey, <laughs> I'll rub your shoulders and everything. Actually, I'll just bear hug you to bring us both in closer at the same time. Uh, we actually been giving you the thrust like come on now <laughs> randall i don't know if you've listened to any of our older podcasts uh we actually have a gentleman that we're friends with that lives a very extravagant <laughs> life when it comes to sexual experiences um and a lot of us live bicuriously through him because he's like <laughs> he goes like crazy uh swinger clubs parties like private parties at people's houses where they're just like yo dude I like watching big boys blow my wife out. Why don't you come on over? And he goes and does that. All right. Um, he was in a situation. <laughs> two guys. Same time, same hole. Yeah, that's. And uh... it took him by surprise. He says he freaks out, but I think he's lying, and I know he came. <laughs> Is this Sean? Do we both know Sean? No. no. <laughs> Oh, shit. I'll name drop people, man. I don't give a shit. He could drive his little smart car over here and fight me if he can get up the hill. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Um, so, uh, no. In all seriousness, though, uh, d- you got something going on right now. Uh, there's a countdown on your Instagram. What What's going on? Yeah, tonight we're airing the first uh, first episode of the Grunt Proof Survival Games. It's like a survival evasion competition I created up in the middle of the woods where my property's at. Um, 
So yeah, tonight's the premiere of the first episode and I'll, I'm premiering it because we can chat with everybody, do a live chat and like YouTube does a little countdown and all that. But instead of just putting up a video and responding to comments later, I'm going to have the two guys that participated. They're going to be logged in. Um, they're in the state, so it's easier for them. It's going to be like two in the morning here for us. But um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. It's something I worked on for about nine months. And uh, nice. it was it was an awesome event event when we did it in November. And um, yeah, first episodes tonight. And I'm I'm ready to be done with all the video editing. I'm on <laughs> I'm on the fourth episode now. There's gonna be five, so I'm almost done. And it's wow. I had yeah. uh I had seven cameras out there rolling almost the whole time. So each event I got about six hundred gigs worth of video Jesus to deal Christ. with. And yeah. Yikes. Had to get a new computer, had to get a new editing program because shit would just crash. You know, I've tried to import videos and yeah, wow. but I, I learned a lot on video editing. Yeah, that's um, it's it's fun, though. I actually enjoy it. Um, I don't know what kind of what kind of setup you use. I have a MacBook Pro and yeah, everything's built into it. So it, it makes it a little simpler, but I've learned a lot. It's fun. Yeah, I know the MacBooks from uh, my old musician days, like everybody used Apple stuff. And I was the guy that got on stage with my crappy old HP laptop trying to run <laughs> like backing tracks through the PA system. And if I hadn't did a disc cleanup before the show, it would like lag and like sub drops oh, wow. and stuff would come in late. It was, yeah. Chris saw a show. So actually, no, Chris yeah. saw the old grunge shows, the more fun ones. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Sounds That's like when fun. Uh, we brought our who well, Jeff was like a lieutenant or a captain at the time. We mm -hmm. brought him out there, and he didn't know what a mosh pit was, so he almost got <laughs> murdered. That's always fun. Uh, so you Plus said the dude trips over everything, anyway. So, <laughs> dude, you should see him out in the woods at my place, man. It's I it's, would love it's to. a freaking. He would be on like a no fly list to come out into the woods if there was one, because he just. He just stands there and falls over. There's like nothing to trip on and he just falls over and there's like ravines and cliffs everywhere. I'm like, dude, like you're going to die out here. Stop doing that. Like hold on to something. So we might have to dummy cord him to ourselves next time just so he's tired off everywhere he goes. Now I'm assuming all this was uh, filmed out at your place up in, in Cali, right? Yeah, there's, um, well, in, I can't remember which episode, but I, I kind of described the area. It's it's in the Sierra Nevadas. So Very you go cool. like right on the edge of that. And then there's a Bureau of Land Management, BLM land. And it's about, uh, I think, 3,200 acres, more than six square miles. So there's a huge area of extremely rough terrain. It's totally inhabitable. And that's why it belongs to BLM, because you can't build on it. You can't do anything with it. So that's the perfect place to do stupid stuff like this make guys up go out there and climb on it and yeah i mean i've always been looking for ways to get people out there like i was considering doing veteran retreats out there and stuff That'd um be cool and then this was like the first thing that i kind of decided to do that you know was a little more feasible i think uh but that um the veteran retreats it's actually a really good idea and it's not like that sounds like you can uh help quite a bit of people out getting together and doing that kind of stuff yeah i kind of reconnect people to the outdoors you know yeah. and uh mm -hmm. get people out of the the suburban city life just you know even just for a weekend um because i don't know i i know when i left the grunt world the infantry i missed kind of being outdoors and kind of the rough aspect of it um but the the thing is it's in california and if i was going to do it as a nonprofit. They make it like I was actually going to register as a, as a nonprofit and then try to get the thing going. But yeah. it's such a pain in the ass and the yeah. bureaucracy. It's like you if you're going to do mm -hmm. something like that, you might as well do it for profit. And then and so then the way to get people out there was I was going to use the nonprofits to help subsidize guys coming there if they couldn't like afford it or something, you know. Yeah. And then we were going to base that off their VA disability rating, you know, so. If you're just a veteran, you got no VA rating, you know, like we'd figure out how to supplement you getting out there. Cause I mean, everything's expensive out there and yeah, the bureaucracy, but I don't know. I was, when I was on Facebook, I was trying to hit up guys and all that. And, you know, I, 
I don't know, man. I've, I've talked to some guys that tried to have reunions of their old units and they're like, yeah, 300 people will say, yeah. And like two people will show up. Yep. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, that, that, I don't know. Uh, it might be down the road. That's cool though. It sounds very interesting. Dave always makes fun of it. He's like, he's like, are you still trying to get guys to come out there to the woods with you? Like, and then he sends me like, like broke back mountain picks and stuff. <laughs> That's what the whole point of owning the cabin is out there. Like, just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My wife and I still want to try to make it out there at some point. We said we were going to, we're definitely going to. Yeah. You guys are welcome. We had, um, these two goot, the two guys that came out here, um, we fixed the place up enough for them to be cool with it. You know, mm -hmm. there's, um, I don't have uh internet yet, but if some mobile network works oh, out that there, sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Cause we had a, one of the contestants is a computer nerd from the LA area. And he's like, Oh, I'll Google it for you. And then we'd wait a minute. He'd pull <laughs> up his phone. Shit. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> But that'd be awesome, man. Like, I think um, the generation and the society that we live in today, these smartphones, they might be smart with everything that they do and what they've replaced for us in our lives, but they're making us a lot dumber. They're not, oh, yeah. you know, they've, they've improved our quality of life too much, I think, where we've become too reliant on them. And then social media in general is just, you know, on top of that, it's like, I've been very, very, very adamant about and being very conscious of how much screen time I have. Like I have all my products are Apple products. So like I have uh, a thing on here, it says, well, on this device, you were so long uh, on it, you know, per day and stuff like that. So it's, it's nice that I can conscious. I see that like when you pay attention to that and you see like, fuck, I was on my phone for six hours today. It's like, that's kind of mind blowing. Like six hours doesn't sound a lot, but if you have worked for nine hours and you've only been awake for, you know, five hours on top of that, it's like, that's ridiculous. Uh, so I've been, I try to stay under an hour and a half a day, like average on my phone. Um, I've got it to the point where I'm at like 37 to 42 minutes average the last, uh, probably six months. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I've, uh, I've definitely cut down on, on my phone too, just because we can't have phones where I work. So right. It just stays out in the hallway. It's just like with smoking. You don't have time anymore. I smoke so much less now. That's good. You should quit should it's weird man when i'm out of my place um i forget about my phone and i'll yeah. uh i'll go on a like a grocery run or something which means an hour one-way drive you know and it's <laughs> on a steep hill and everything and you don't know if you'll make it back up and i'll be down at the store and i'll think oh maybe i'll ask so and so if they want something while i'm down here then i realize i don't have my phone with me i mean we have a radio in the truck if we have to get picked up or something but it's like you don't realize uh how little you need it till you get rid of it. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, with all the video crap, I kind of have to be on stuff a lot, but yeah, like social media stuff, just like scrolling through pages. Yeah, man. It, yeah, I don't do that. If you're doing like, if you're handling your own content like that, especially if you're a creator, a content creator or something, that's different. I get that. You're trying to expand your brand and expand your name. Uh, but if you're just sitting there like on Instagram all day, like <laughs> fuck yeah. that shit, I do not need that. I can't. It, it, I can't. Like, there's times like we have, we'll be sitting here at dinner, and then everybody's on their phone. It's like, god damn it, I just got home from work. Put your fucking phones away. Like, let's have a conversation. How was your day? Fine. It's like I swear to God, I'm gonna break that fucking cunt right out of your hands and smash it. I hate it. Like these phones are killing us. Isn't it weird that it's called social media, but we've all become more anti-social? Yeah, like I swear yeah, to God, so like, the, like people, they're like, oh my God, I'm friends with you know, I'm always doing this on Insta, this, this, and this. And it's like, yeah, but you've essentially turned yourself into a fucking introvert in real world, you know. It's insane. Yeah. 
Yeah, especially these these younger girls, man. Like I've I've seen and read a lot of stuff about these fans only ladies and just the influencers. Like, you know, it's kind of good for them. They wanted equality. Like, if you look half decent, you know, and you're kind of in shape as a girl, you could basically make a living online. But it's uh, you know the psychological effects of it. It's like to what to what extent, you know, like. Mm -hmm. and equality doesn't you know the the old feminists would say all men are pigs and everything but now their response is kind of acting like pigs like men you know yeah. like that's a form of equality and they you know they kind of used to hate porn and um sell it like objectifying women and then they're objectifying themselves because they, and stuff. because well no and, and that's what that's what really fucks me off too is because you know you know they're taking what they're taking it back no what you're doing is you're exploiting it it's it's okay it was shitty that way but when it rolls into your favor and you can exploit it then hooray yeah. you know what i mean like that's cool man do what yeah, you want to do but it's pretty arbitrary you know don't objectify me i'm going to objectify myself and <sighs> the best part about that is for all especially all those feminists and shit like they're a fat weird hillbilly like me can get on only fans and still generate money as well just like a hot chick so what does that tell you about our society <laughs> you start selling your farts yeah that's what it is man i just got a page just the starfishes that i just you know i put like little googly eyes on it and it's weird that could be the next meat man <laughs> You guys want to play cornhole? <laughs> yeah, we we put a whole different meaning to it. <laughs> Fucking, we play horseshoes. It's just Chris laying on the ground with a dildo hanging out of his butt, and we're trying to put like diving oh, rings around it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird, man. Um, I don't know, like. I, I definitely agree with the sentiment that we have too much information. We've got an information overload. And I think that's kind of part of our political turmoil because everybody knows everything about everything, you know, and that kind of leads people to like disagree and not want to hear another stance anymore because they've read whatever freaking I'm right.com article. And it's like, yeah. all right, well, you know, <laughs> like the stuff that's going on with Joe Rogan right now, like the main on Twitter, the main complaint about him is misinformation and it's like yeah they're like well you want to get your medical advice from joe rogan it's like no we don't like he has doctors and scientists on mm -hmm. from like all sides it's like so he joe rogan is not pushing anything no you know it's like he's just he talking to people. <laughs> he's the best at what he does he knows exactly what he's doing the more these people talk about it, he's probably laying in his he's laying in his mansion laughing his ass off because oh, yeah. this is generating if I mean he was already the like one of the biggest podcasts in the world. Guess what? It just increased exponentially. Yeah. Um, and if Spotify drops him, whoever he goes to will just conquer Yeah. Yep. They'll take conquer over the market. Spotify, yeah. I was, you know, I was kind of surprised he left YouTube for that, but I figured it was because of the money. Like they, they shout out some money, but they're also deleting some of his episodes or, or they're putting on, um, you know, like a disclaimer, which is cool. Fine. Put a disclaimer on there, but yeah, definitely do they've a deleted a couple of his episodes and that's kind of, it's kind of crappy. Wow. All right. That is crappy. But, but like you know, you can still like the JRE clips on YouTube. Like I, I never like, I never went to Spotify, so I would watch somebody would always um like screen record his stuff and they would put it up on youtube so i would hear whatever mm -hmm. his next thing like the thing with dr malone i downloaded that from youtube because somebody else put it up there so it's like you don't have to go there to watch joe rogan but it's funny because on uh twitter i saw a lot of people not really caring about the politics they would just say like wow thanks twitter world i never knew who joe joe rogan was but i'm definitely a fan now so it's kind of, <laughs> kind of like backfiring on him yeah because um, i i started following that guy after he was already huge you know like yeah. he kind of took over adam carolla's like being the big podcaster godfather and that was still when he was just in that old shitty studio, just getting stoned with his comedian buddies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was awesome, man. And then it developed into like real conversations with people, you know, it's like, yeah. it's pretty cool. 
Um, but that's the thing, like going back to what you say, we have too much information. And we, I think we've gotten to the point like where we pull these phones out, like to fact check everybody. Like we're, we're to the point where we're reciting information, but we're not retaining any. And right. you see that, especially a lot with the younger generation. Like my kids say like some off the wall bonkers are like, yeah, it's right here on the internet. I'm like, you guys are fucked out of your minds. Like, do you even <laughs> know what you're talking about? And it just, it, it cracks me up, man, because that's what these phones have done to us. And we turned it into a fucking multi, multi billion dollar, uh, enterprise throughout the entire world. That's really funny about the um, the world I'm in on YouTube. Like, I'm not really a survivalist bushcrafter dude. I kind of just do whatever I want. But uh, when I look in the comments on, especially on other bigger people's videos, it's like you, everybody is a hero and they know everything about survival. And you can just tell from the comment that they haven't been in the woods at all. Yeah. But they've seen every big survival episode. So they're like, yeah, oh, yeah, you got to do it this way and do it that way. And, and it's like, I mean, you can tell it's like some kid that's never actually done it. It's like, OK, cool. So like you said, he can recite some stuff that he saw in a video. But, you know, can you go out in the woods in a freaking rainstorm or a snowstorm and actually perform it? Probably not, because those are all like perishable skills. Like, uh, yeah, I, I I was watching one of the contestants. He's an army first sergeant. He's a really good instructor. And I've seen some of his land navigation videos and it's just basic, you know, components of the compass and the basics of shooting an azimuth and all that. And as, I mean, the video's almost got a million views now, but I look in the comments and there's all these like kids telling him how messed up he is a 20 year freaking veteran, you know, that, and see anybody can make up stuff on YouTube. Yeah. But actually seeing him out there in the games, I'm like, all right, yeah, this dude knows his shit, you know, but he's got he's got kids sharpshooting him. It's like, dude, like maybe one day instead of doing the veteran thing, I'll do like a a punk ass kid boot camp or something where oh, it's yeah. like, <laughs> we just we, like the we just bring people out there and people. Yeah, that's the survival games. We just drop punk ass kids in the woods with a compass or nothing. They're like, all right, you know, there you go. Come on. We'll see you. We'll see you in four days. <laughs> yeah that's crazy like no phones that's the rule no phones to google what to do figure it out you know exactly <laughs> and that's the thing like you i like how you said it's perishable uh knowledge um i where i grew up in ohio i grew up around a lot of what like my entire childhood childhood was in the woods but not like we're hanging out building shit having fun like we built bridges across creeks and like we had like a at one point we had like dude we were building tree houses and like forts and trees like 60 feet up as kids, kids like, even climb trees anymore that's the thing like it's like yeah no we went home we went home uh the last time we went home i took my kids for a walk in the woods i'm like oh my god this shit's still here and i'm showing them like dude we did this for like how the fuck did you guys get this back here? And it's like, it's, you just did it. We had fun. Like, that's what we did. But like, you know, just like surviving in the woods and playing in the woods are obviously two different things. Um, however, we have a lot of property in Northern Ontario. Uh, the closest neighbor is with, with electricity. I think it's like 13 and a half kilometers, something like that. It It's far as fuck. I uh, think the we're directly on a river, nothing. There's literally nothing around. My dad has built this entire camp himself, like by hand as the years go by and stuff like that. It's really nice. He's built it to where there's a lot of creature comforts now, but when you go out there, you're still, cool. you're roughing it. Um, cool. And we learned a lot of stuff growing up. I couldn't tell it like, you put me in a situation where I go, like, I wouldn't know what the fuck to do. Like, I haven't done that kind of shit in, you know, 20 years. So if I go back there, I'm just like, cool, man. I don't know what I'm doing. Did you guys know, uh, you guys know Canada is larger than America, right? Yes. Yeah. I just learned, I, I knew that, but I just learned that Canada's population is only about 39 million people. It's less than the, po their yeah, total they have population so is less than California's population. Yeah, they have that they have the population of California on 
mostly wilderness that's yep. bigger than mm-hmm. America. That is freaking like, I got a buddy that's up there that also does videos and he's, he's like up in the country. Um, yep. He told me that. And I was like, dude, you know, when, I don't know, man, like that would be a cool place to go. Cause most it's people cool. think of Canada, they think of like the cities, you know, no, just yeah. like America, they think of the hippie cities, but it's like, dude, that's some serious wilderness up there. We're talking yeah. about grizzly bears. And- that's the thing. Um, we have, remember like those old uh, Sony handy cams, they had like the night vision on them. Yeah. My mm-hmm. dad, he called me the one night, uh, we were up there, we were building this log cabin, like logs. We cut the trees down, we planed them, did them all ourselves, notched them out. And we built log cabin with everything on the property awesome but we also had like while we were building that there's a garage that was already like a building there that was already there and that's where we were sleeping my dad calls me he's like you gotta come out to the fire i'm like okay so i go out the man door and there's this huge wild raspberry bush right there and he's laughing like an asshole i go over there and he shows me like the night vision on the sony cam I was literally maybe two and a half feet away from, I had to walk past this bear just sitting there eating raspberries. He thought it was the funniest thing. And I was like, I think I was like 15. I was like, fuck this. I was like, was it I a don't blank bear? <laughs> huh? Was it a blank bear? It was a sun bear. So it was, it, I mean, it's not a big ass bear, but. Is, yeah. What is that more like a, a brown bear or blank bear? Cause like uh, the, it's, I think it might be smaller than a black bear. Well, I mean the species cause, um, black it's bears more like are a black bear. The, okay. It's more like a black bear. Yeah. Cause they're usually more, they're like 97% vegetarians, vegans, like they'll eat dead yeah. animals if they find them, but they're not like a grizzly. They want to eat stuff that runs. Yeah. But if you're, okay. you know, 13, 14 years old, it's still, oh, yeah, that's terrifying. Pretty yeah. terrifying. <laughs> 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 Especially to your dad to just be sitting there belly laughing about it he probably had a <laughs> shotgun ready or something hey no. duck <laughs> <laughs> no. dude i had a i had a bear come up on me a pretty big one my my second to the last trip up there there's like this really awesome lookout point i like to go to it's like a 15 minute quad ride through the woods and i go sit on this awesome lookout point and i go out there and drink pbr usually till mm. after dark and then come back in and like uh I, I saw its head pop up and I thought it was, it kind of reminded me of a dog, but then I noticed the ears and the nose. I was like, yeah. all right, that's a freaking bear. Um, and like where we're at, you really don't see them if you're making noise because they're truly wild. They, yeah. they don't want anything to do with us. So I was like, all right, well, it'll see me or smell me pretty soon. But then I recognized the wind was coming at me away oh, from it. Yeah. So it couldn't, sm- it couldn't smell me. And I, and I hadn't moved in a while. So for some reason it didn't see me. So I'm sitting there assuming that it's going to pick me up eventually and get the hell out of there. Well, then it got to within, and I'm like, we're on, it's like a pretty steep hilltop. So when it crested the hill and I could see it, there's probably like 30 feet between oh. us, you oh, know, shit. cause it's a That's really, way it's too a really, for comfort. I can try to, I can screen share, right. I can try to show you a picture of this spot. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so it crested that hill and I'm like, all right, well, it's kind of, it's kind of see me. And it just casually started walking towards me just, it would sniff every now and then, but wouldn't smell me because I was downwind and uh, I got to within probably like 15 feet. And that's when I was really stressing. Like I had my hand on my gun and um, <laughs> I was like, I, you know, you don't want to shoot a wild animal just no, for the hell of it. At least, at least I don't. Um, no. So especially at a season in California, that'd be bad. So I'm, I'm sitting there thinking like, all right, well, if I scream and yell at it now or move, um, it might be so close. It's just going to maul me because I'm within yeah, its that freaking you're, kill you jump it like that. It's, it, it, it's, it's like walking flight, up on one. Yeah, it's fight and flight and sink kicks in, but your distance is too short. So there's no flight at that point. It's going to stay in and fight. Yeah. Uh, so, so I finally, <laughs> it, it got to within, yeah, probably 15, 10 feet. I'm about <sighs> to kill my camera. And then uh, I finally just said, like, some kind of inaudible shit, you know, and uh, it, it didn't even look at me. It just bolted. It just, you know, if that would have been like a park bear or something, it probably would have killed me mm-hmm. and eaten me because they're like kind of habituated. But yeah, yeah, that's that's the third one I've seen in real life up close. Um, but usually I, I don't even get to say anything or, or make a noise like they pick me up and they're gone. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty cool, you know, and like we got, 
I catch mountain lions on our game cameras all the time, but that's scary. Never seen, Those never seen one in the wild. Me. That's what I was going to ask you because I remember the last time that I saw you at the unit, you had uh, those big ass paw prints on, yeah. is that on your dad's property? I think. Well, dude, this last trip, I had a huge pile of bear crap right in my backyard, Oh shit. like 10 feet from my house, man. Cause uh, we're never, I'm not up there all year long. So mm -hmm. it came to drink from my pond and took a dump in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so I got, I got some extra berries to eat if I need to. <laughs> But there I, I sent that's I sent that that was when me and Jeff went out there for the to set up for the games. And I was like, hey Jeff, come mm -hmm. check this out. And he looked at it and he looked at my house. He's like, dude, that's like <laughs> when we come out in your back porch, it's right there. I'm like, yeah, man. And then yeah. I sent a picture of that to the contestants. I'm like, hey, you guys are coming out to bear country. I hope you know that. <laughs> that's awesome. But that's the thing. Like you see, like our property up there, you see a lot of um you see a lot of bear tracks over there. There's a lot of traffic, even for the brown bears there. Um, but in all honesty, the thing that scared me the most, that makes me the most nervous, are moose, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard those things. They're are pretty, fucking pretty assholes. crazy, man. Holy fuck. Uh, we went, um, like, I'm not an avid hunter, I would say. Like, I have the skills, you know what I mean? Like, I, I can hunt. I'm just not a massive fan of it. But... Given the situation, when you got to do it, got to do it. Um, so my dad took me, I think it might have been my first moose hunt ever. No. Yeah, me, I don't know. First or second. Uh, we're in a tree stand. We get one. My dad got it, but he didn't go down. This thing, I, at that point, I did not think our tree stand was up high enough. This thing damn near killed itself trying to get us out of that tree. I, I literally almost shit my pants. It was so terrifying. And those things are huge, huh? Fucking 800 pounds. It was enormous. Yeah. You I've still seen, remember uh, seeing those ones in Poland. Yeah. Yeah. We saw them crossing the road. So can I screen share something real yeah. quick? Of course you can if i can uh let me get the porn away all right get uh, uh, chris's mom i'll close that <laughs> motherfucker sorry dude she, well she gives veteran discounts i can't help it <laughs> which is weird those people uh, aren't really known for giving discounts on, to anybody you guys see that yeah okay so um yeah that's me i'm flying the drone but i was sitting um probably right here can you see the mouse pointer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I was sitting there and this bear climbed up from this direction and popped oh, up Jesus right about Christ. here. This is a mound. Holy shit. Yeah. This is a mound. So the bear caught up to this road and stuck its head above this mound. And I was over here, you know, this is probably 30 feet. So oh. it's bigger than it looks, but um, yeah, you know, you see how little I am, but yeah, that's, Fuck, that's man. how uh, close it was. And I'm just sitting there, you know, the, the sunset is um like, uh, to the bottom left of the screen. So I, I'm just looking in that direction. The sun goes down and then like they come out like clockwork, you know? So yeah, it was pretty freaking close, man. God damn. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. I told my, I came back and told my son that, and he was like, first question, you know, did you shoot it? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I love you. And I love that question, but no, Sam, we don't just shoot stuff. We try no. not to. Your son's very is pretty young, if I remember right. Yeah, he's six now. Okay, now are you slowly getting him into the that kind of world as far as uh as a survivalist? Oh yeah, I'm uh at least once a month I take him out into the woods over here in Germany. That's awesome. And um, at the very least, he gets a stick and just destroys stuff and breaks trees and climbs trees like. He's the only German, well, he's half German, but he's the only kid around here I know that climbs trees. That's you know? awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to prepare him for that stuff here because he's been to our place a lot in the States. Like, he's, mm -hmm. I think he's been to the States with us five or six, five, four or five times now. So, um, but I want to prepare him for the woods here where it's relatively safe. So yeah. when we start going camping and stuff like that out there, I don't have to worry about him being stupid. 
you know, because yeah. he, he's like I was as a kid. Like you can say, well, don't walk out there alone. You'll get eaten by something and he will purposely go walk out there alone. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> it's like, OK, this is a gun like I, I want to get him comfortable with guns so that he's safe with them early on because we will have them out there. Yeah, but it's like, uh, you know, we got to start with a BB gun and stuff like that, because if he just shoots me in the dick for the hell of it, it's better yeah. that it's a little pellet gun rather than, you know, our our 20 gauge shotgun. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. It's like, well, I'm glad we're done having kids because it ain't happening. <laughs> a black hole there. <laughs> Dude, I gave uh, Jeff, I, I took away, he, he liked the pistol that I carry out there. It's like a, it's a Smith and Wesson 99 and it's actually the one that's um, it's made. It's no, it's an, it's American, but it's assembled in Germany. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you why, but it says that on there and it's a really popular model, but uh, it's 40 caliber Jeff. That was his favorite one, but he was so goofy with stuff and the trigger so light, you know, and there's no safety mm -hmm. on it. I gave him the Dan Wesson, which that's an awesome gun. It's a cowboy big old cowboy gun it shoots uh 38 or 457 oh wow so i gave him that and uh it was funny because during the games we were carrying them and um i kept mine hidden just for like the videos and just to not like try to draw attention to it but he's walking around with this huge revolver hanging off of his hip <laughs> and you know jeff is like a, a clown with with everything so it's not it's not like secure. It like it looks like the, the little <laughs> leather freaking button's gonna pop off at any time. And he's taking off a backpack and his gun flips up in the air with it. And it's, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm glad I only gave him five bullets in there, so at least I know the chamber's empty. <laughs> uh, but we did a cool scene. Uh, I think I'll have it in the fourth episode where um, he's asking about guns, and he's like do the contestants get to carry guns? And I'm like, nope, absolutely not. That would be terrible if the hunter is creeping up on the survivor and gets shot. Like, it would make for good TV, but it'd be bad for me and yeah. the guy that gets shot. But then he's like, uh, he's like, okay, so what's going to stop you from accidentally shooting somebody? And then I did the Rocky Four. I'm like, if he dies, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks so now for him. I don't know if you want to give uh, too much information out. Uh, you said this, you know, these are survival games. How you just mentioned the hunter, there's somebody hunting people surviving, right? Uh, is this basically like just a big uh, a cat and mouse game or hide and seek in the woods where you're, you have to use real life survival tactics in order to keep moving forward yeah well it's it's more like uh in the in the military we call it seer survival evasion resistance escape okay so there's like many components to it and um i'm going to change the name for next year because survival is a very small part of it um mm -hmm. as, and as a matter of fact survival was it was pretty pretty limited here and eventually i'll talk about why but um you know, there's a thousand survival shows out there and yeah. they're all insane guys just doing crazy stuff, half naked in the woods. So like, I thought mine was cool because I wanted to add the evasion aspect. So it's not just, it is kind of like cat and mouse. It's not like, that would be kind um, of fun. it's not like two guys just chasing each other, jerking off in the woods. That's what they were worried about it turning into. But um, like the hunter gets a scout assigned to him. So he has like a hunting team. So he gets perks, supply drops, all kinds of stuff. He gets to use my drone to find the guy, which it's all in the series. Um, Jeff was usually the scout and he would make runs on the ATV through the area and like observe and report. So it's really kind of like the hunted or actually, I didn't know about this movie until one of the guys told me about it. Um, it's got Owen Wilson with the jet i know exactly what you're wait behind enemy what? lines okay ah uh, yeah okay where he's in kosovo and gets shot down and he's got the yeah. team of guys or serbians chasing him mm -hmm. that's i i had never seen that movie and um one of the contestants was like dude this was totally like uh behind enemy lines and so eventually i came home and watched it and i was like yeah all right pretty pretty much so it, it's like a one-on-one -on -one competition 
but the survivor's on his own and the hunter has uh you know a whole team so mm -hmm. yeah That's cool. but i you know like i said um there's plenty of survival shows and i really wanted to hit the evasion part home because a lot of these survival guys if you added a chase to it and a physical component because it's it, it's terrible terrain you know it's it's kind of the show guys like how survival if you're actually evading somebody like you're screwed i think it'd be <laughs> actually kind of fun like because you can see people like actually inducing panic on others and watching them run <laughs> and see it, like you know what i mean like it's yeah it's it's like yeah like you said it's like cat and mouse but with a little deliverance spin on it deliverance <laughs> dude if you heard uh you know me and jeff like planned our training for our reserve unit a bunch and we did that usually like over beers and in flip-flops you know yeah that was our reserve <laughs> training planning and me and him like he helped me i i did most of this stuff but um he kind of helped me every now and then and we we would have crazy ideas like that like just off the wall stuff and i would look at it you know like i i did consult with a a legal person for this and so i did send them some of my crazy ideas just to see where my boundaries were and they're like yeah. no you know don't do that <laughs> so because i wanted to have a shooting component to it too like a stress fire thing and uh i don't want to give too much away but there is a way to do it we found out now but for this time i told the legal team that and he's like, if you do that, you will get sued just by people watching the video. I'm like, shit. Boy, <laughs> there you go, Bobby. Now we know your limit. <laughs> it's time to get us fans. Let's do it. So I want you to <laughs> reveal this that will get you sued, like people watching it. Let's next when we actually go live on YouTube live. Cause like my that's my whole thing, man. Like, if you're a listener. You know what's going on. I always joke about getting canceled because I don't give a fuck. People like I like you're doing it right, man. You're you're doing man shit. Like you're bringing people back to like what it needs to be. Like the generation that we have now, myself unfortunately included, because we're so dependent on the you know the the easiness of life and what it has to offer at the moment. Where you look back to our grandparents there there was no fucking like they went to war as kids then they came home and built an entire country you know what i mean cuz like that's when Amer that's when it boomed that was like you know those were the kind of people where when it came put up or shut up they didn't need a safe space they just kept going yeah and i love that like we we need more of that and mm -hmm. so I'm very, I'm wholeheartedly against this cancel culture. Like these fucking pussies that are going back and can't, like, if I say something like, Hey man, I found this video that you said in 2002. Yeah. That was fucking 20 years ago. Who cares? <laughs> no, man, you're canceled. Like, fuck, seriously. You can't like that bothers you 20 years ago. It drives <laughs> me nuts. Well, the cool thing is there is a huge uh, backlash against it. Like, you know, when you have an extreme, you have another one. And so you got the Young America Foundation. That's the, the group, the Republicans or conservatives in colleges actually bringing Ben Shapiro and them out there to speak. Mm -hmm. That's usually the foundation doing it. And it's only getting more popular. It's just like what we said about trying to censor Joe Rogan. You know, if you try to shut people up, especially Americans, they, they will resist. And so yeah. Yeah. it's like, there's, you know, I, I don't identify as either side, but there's plenty of, there's plenty of guys on the right that I definitely don't really support everything they say, but just watching them having full blown riots against them. And they have like the yeah. bureaucratic freaking hurdles they got across just to go speak at a college. It's like, so, so now they've gone back to the other extreme. It's like conservatism is on the rise, especially among millennials and younger. And like the, the I see the people on Twitter, they can't handle it. They're like, well, no. it's because they're getting stupider. It's like, no, it's yeah. because you've been calling everybody Nazis all the time. It's like, yeah. you know, you can call somebody racist or a Nazi. It eventually, it's like the boy who cried wolf. It just loses meaning. And it's like, nobody yep. cares anymore, yeah. you know? 
Yeah. So I don't know, man. I was thinking things were pretty dark for a while, but it's like seeing how people have responded, especially with this COVID stuff. It's like, it's like you can only push people so far. I mean, um, mm-hmm. I don't and know. I, I've seen Germany's kind of being silly about all this stuff still, but every time I go back to the States, how they're being here, dude. Um, I don't, I've been going. So me and Jeff were in California in March of 2020 when it got serious, when they started the death tolls on the news Mm -hmm. and they were wearing masks every now and then. But then the next time I went back and it it had been probably three or four months when governor Newsom did like the mandate, the mask mandates and all that. And still, dude, I went to the grocery stores outside the Metro and nobody freaking cared. No, you know, and I was just like, yeah, America. (laughs) Well, <laughs> that's how it is with my parents too. Like the signs, please wear your mask. You walk in, no one's got a mask on. It's like, yes, either they can't read or they just said, fuck it. <laughs> can't read. Well, in Florida, yeah, you could get away with that. <laughs> or in California, like, yeah, I got a or Missouri. In California. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, now, um, I don't real know, quick, man. I'll be right back. So, yeah, okay. Dude, piss in your freaking mason jar, you little girl. Um, now, especially like, I like how you say it. Like, now, are you conservative or are you more liberal or you try to be in the middle? I don't try to be anything. The funny thing is, um, or, I'm if, sorry, where if do I you had find yourself, yeah, that's weird, man. Because um, when when I have to identify myself, like. I would probably still call myself a classical liberal. Yep. Um, but, you know, years ago, probably five or six years ago, when I actually started thinking about that stuff, like the spectrum and everything, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm liberal. That's cool. Um, but these days, like the non-liberal, okay, well, a lot of classical liberal stuff, like individuality, that's yep. no longer a, a modern liberal thing. That's a no. conservative thing. So. Limited government, that was also classical liberalism, you know, because it went against individuality, like the collective big government does not support liberalism, because how can you be tolerant of people if you're also trying to tell them what to do. So now that's kind of become a, it's become a conservative like slander, even though I know plenty of conservatives and Republicans that are also big government. So that's, that's why I just kind of gave up. Like if somebody asks, I'll say, all right, I'm like middle to left and I kind of have some conservative viewpoints. That's yeah. pretty much it. Cause um, it's like, it's all been blurred. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing I, I've always like, I consider myself liberal or Democrat. Um, however, I always try to ride the middle cause there's a lot of things on the conservative side that I like. Um, but it's, it's just a matter of being, you know, well-informed, you know what I mean? Like inform yourself, who cares what your political party is, what's best for our country, what's best for you and your family. That's what you need to really think about. Not, well, no, fuck that. I'm, I'm voting all, you know, I'm a Democrat. I'm voting all Democrat for everything. It's like, okay, well, do you know, do you know what that person really stands for? No, but they're a Democrat. Okay, cool. Like, and yeah. unfortunately <laughs> that's, that's normal. You know what I mean? Like, I know a lot of people who do that, and it blows my mind. And what sucks is uh, the same people on the right crying about identity politics and stuff. They play the same game. Like, um, all the Trumpers, you know, um, I didn't like Trump his first time around. 2024, son. I'm calling it. (laughs) You know, it could happen, man. But It could. I look, he's looking at some of his policies when he was in, he had some big government policies. It was just oh, yeah. because he was wearing a red tie. It was okay. You yep. know? And uh, I mean, I, I'm sure you guys know this, Chris, you've definitely heard me bitch about this, but when I see conservatives and Republicans stressing about the current overreaching federal government, it's like, mm-hmm. well, it all comes from the Patriot Act that uh, Clinton and them created in the nineties, but it was implemented by George Bush. And by the way, a three, a three branch Republican government and after nine 11, that was a three branch Republican government that signed in the Patriot act, you know, because we had just been attacked and everybody it's like back then, George Carlin, a liberal was the one crying foul. He's like, well, you can't walk into an airport without getting molested these days. Americans are okay with giving away their freedoms 
for a little bit of security. And back then he was poking the Republicans and the conservatives in the eye. You know, well, now it's that same overreaching federal government, but it's coming from the left side, the Democratic side. And mm-hmm. now they're all flipping out about it. It's like, you know, we gave up our every time we give up our freedoms because our party's in control. We're yep. still giving up freedoms. And so the next people are going to come in and they may not be for us. It's like when uh, when my leftist or liberal friends would talk about gun control and stuff, it's like once Trump was in and they were calling him literally Hitler and he was going to start a genocide. It's like, OK, so you think we should be able to bear arms now, right? You know, because now like you're okay with gun control but now the guy you don't like is in so how do you feel about gun control now it's like how about we all just get guns forever you know (laughs) because it it's not always going to be your guy in the office or your people in the office so like yeah it's like that's i don't know identity politics i think has definitely killed us and we've gone into this tribalist bullshit you know and i used to like the army especially our unit because we all were very different um Mm -hmm. and we would all talk shit and yell about stuff and yell at each other but we would still get along and get missions done um but just before i left i started to see like it also kind of started to deteriorate because talking about the safe spaces man like some people just can't handle different opinions or they think they're so right you know they refuse to hear anything it's like that and and that ties into yeah. what I was saying. How they recite facts, they recite information without retaining any information because they just they puke this stuff at you, but they have no fucking clue what they're even talking about or what they're spitting mm-hmm. at you. And it's like, God, man, it scares me sometimes. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of optimistic. Um, That's good. Yeah. Like like I said, I thought it was doom and gloom for a while, but. Um, on my kind of fun page, my veteran page, I'm going to do like a, a pandemic or, an, or like an American optimism thing. Like I've cussed out conservatives and everybody else for the last year or so, just cussing everybody out. But I have an optimistic one that I think is still it's it's a little more satirical, like instead of just this guy fucking sucks because of this going to be like, well, this guy sucks, but it makes this awesome. Like um, yeah. I got a lot of friends that that do prepping videos and stuff. And, you know, YouTube ads are a joke. It's like, I have people write me and they're like, why do I have women's beauty products show up before your videos? And I'm like, dude, YouTube goes off of what you watch. So what are you freaking Googling and watching? Oh, it's my wife's yeah. computer. It's like, well, <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> like, why do I have dildo videos popping up before drug proof? And who doesn't beat off to makeup tutorials? <laughs> but i have a a a big thing in this community is um they're like well if you want to talk about if you want a gun or ammo sponsor you have to they have to reach out to you and you actually have to do paid promotion in a youtube video and so a lot of guys are complaining they're like why doesn't youtube just allow us to do guns and ammo and it's like well they don't need to man like the best freaking advertisement to buy guns and get trained on guns and buy ammo is everybody watching the riots in the cities the last couple of years and mm-hmm. realizing that the federal government and the police will not protect you. Like you know, call the police, man. It's going to be a 30 minute wait. So good luck with that. And especially know? how a lot of cities <laughs> are trying to defund the police. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that, 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 that 30, 40 minute call is now going to take three hours. You cunt. have <laughs> yeah. fun. Keep crying. <laughs> if they come at all. Exactly. Like in that Chaz area, uh, the cops tried to show up for some of the shootings they had, and the people mm-hmm. blocked them and threw them out. <laughs> so that's why um, I'm optimistic, man, because, you know, um, people people that let those policies get out of control and just let those people get in to do that stuff, like, yeah. they're learning a hard lesson, you know? It's just like when my kid throws a fit and I lock him in his room and he destroys his toys. Like, I don't go in there and stop him. I let him go. And when he's calmed down, I say, good job calming down. And then I throw his broken toys away in front of him. I'm like, there you go. You fucking broke your toys. You don't respect them. So goodbye. Yep. You know, so we just got to let the kids throw their fits. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing, man. Like it's, oh man. Like, I, I don't know people, some of the, these, this newer, younger generation has me worried because it's, I mean, these are the people, you know what I mean? Like you need 
sometimes a lot of this stuff that they're trying to get rid of, we need. It's Life is all about checks and balances, especially in government. Like trying to get rid of what? Just everything. Like, uh, you know, censor certain words and this, that, and the other thing. I thought oh. we had free speech. Doesn't that go against our constitutional right? You know? Well, again, it's uh, they're okay with, you know, giving up rights and stuff if it's on their, if it's in their favor. Yeah. That's what they don't understand. Like one day it's, it's like that old saying about the Jews in the Holocaust, you know, they came for this guy and it wasn't me. So I didn't speak up. And it's yeah. like, finally they came for me and there was nobody to speak for me. It's like, that's, mm -hmm. that's what a lot of people are realizing. It's like, um, they, you know, I, I started getting deep into the charters of freedom and like the federalist papers. Cause I was pretty, I was pretty good on the constitution. Um, no, thanks to my public education. They don't teach it anymore, but, no. um, after these last couple of years, I just really wanted to get more educated on it. And it really is a perfect document, you know, like there's, they, they made some updates and there's, there's, it's, you know, you can interpret things differently, but it's, it's all genius documents and it's all written to where there's no screwing with it. And yeah. like, what's freaky is now they're actually trying to change that stuff. Like, um, trying to get rid of the electoral college, you know, it's like, you do not want majority rule. Like no. we're a bicameral constitutional Republic. We're not a democracy for a reason because the majority, like, like I, I stirred up some shit on Instagram the other night. Cause I called, I said, the majority of people are, fat dumb and lazy and blah 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 it's like you don't want those people telling you how to live your life i don't care if they may support you now you know like you want to watch <laughs> football and eat donuts all day cool but one day um they might take over it's like the climate crisis stuff like i always ask when i see these social warriors on inst on uh, twitter I always like retweet it and then i say like you know, most of them are giant purple haired ladies. And I'm like, well, how are you going to feel when the social, the, the socialist weight control program gets implemented? Because uh, overconsumption is going to be a climate crime. Like yep. if these people get their way, consuming too much will be a climate crime because it's bad for the environment. So that's going to be a huge weight control issue in America. You know, it's like, <laughs> Go eat your McDonald's and get big. I don't care. Good for you. Here's the but thing, though, especially you let some crazy people in Texas get going, and they really uh, put the Bible under law. Gluttony. Right. That's again. That's that's a cardinal sin. So why wouldn't that be a law? That's another thing. Uh, going in the other direction with big government, the yep. Abbott Governor Abbott and the abortion ruling Fuck, it's like dude. Uh -huh. that's big government it's it supports conservative and republican values but it's still big government yeah. you know i think and what i don't get is um i've paid attention to the argument for a while and i don't know okay well just because i don't know people doesn't mean it doesn't exist but i think like the main the main theme of the conservative abortion argument it isn't what you do to your baby like you don't want they don't want people killing their babies of course but um, it's really about like, okay, do what you want, but don't make me pay for it. You know, that's the thing is like Planned Parenthood was heavily subsidized. Yeah. So like, that's where I, I didn't support the conservative because they wanted to like ban abortion. And it's yeah. like, well, it's like banning guns. People are going to do it either way. It's like, how about mm -hmm. we just stop funding Planned Parenthood through taxes? You know, it's like, let them figure out how they want to do that. And let's just not take it out of everybody's uh paycheck you yep. know that was that was the main conservative like argument but when abbott did that everybody was like super happy about it and it's like so like whether you argue when it's a baby or not is irrelevant um six weeks man a lot of chicks don't know if they're pregnant in six weeks no you know? they don't like a lot of them don't find out they're like oh shit yeah i'm like nine or ten weeks pregnant and it's like oh, yeah. cool like that's how it was for <laughs> my oldest my wife's like yo we have a problem i'm like what she's like well for the last we few months this is what's been going on i'm like awesome oh dude that's I was... all she tells you houston we have a problem <laughs> we were young, dude. i was young. i was like i think it was 22 oh okay yeah and we were just i mean we hadn't even really started life you know what i mean 
<laughs> like <laughs> we should not have been had, having kids at that point. Like, you know what I mean? But, you know, I used to agree with that, but I think it's kind of um, my parents had us like we're three siblings. They had us starting at like 17. Yeah. And um, that really sucks. That's how, that's uh, especially, how my life is. Especially if you're not like established at all. Like, we, I mean, I was too young to remember. We started off in trailers, man, in Mississippi. We, we yeah. were the stereotype. But uh, there we go. Sucks. You're used to that, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with that? Well, that's, that sucks for them, but that also means that we got out of their lives very early. And, you know, most men don't develop their frontal cortex until they're like 35, 38 or something. So by the time my, my father was, was being, becoming a real man, his kids were already getting out of his life. And so, and plus you're still kind of able to move around. Like I I see some of these older Germans, you know, when you're out in public and you, you can't tell if the kid belong, if if the if person is the grandparent or the yep. parent and it's like i look at them and like they can barely play with their kids and they're already so old they're like grumpy and they've lost like the the fantasy of playing with your kids they're just like they treat them like dogs or like adults they're just like hey, go play over there leave me alone you know it's like see so, so they and that's where and then when their kids are gone they're already they're going to be way too old to enjoy life after that you know that's mm-hmm. why chris is doing it right chris is a 32 year old grandfather <laughs> I'm not fucking 32, goddammit. <laughs> what are you, like 37, 38? Yeah, I'm 37. All right, yeah. You just look young, man. It must be the religion. They all oh, my golden, seriously, mother, like, fucker. Those golden juice. Or something. Yeah. Fucker, man. Like, right now, like, how the hoodie that he's wearing, like, how he's sitting on this, he looks like a kid, like an eighth grader in a Zoom class right, right. now. <laughs> well, have you seen him in person? Yeah. Okay. I've seen Chris uh, a bunch of times. Yeah, when we go to the range and he's wearing gear, it's like you're worried if he's gonna fall over like you're playing Jenga. Oh my god. Like... <laughs> oh, I love this. See, we're not the only ones. Like we've been telling them like we have a running gag on this podcast, like in the background. We always ask, you know, is Pam feeding you? Like, dude, blink if you need a sandwich. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I heard that one. <laughs> And when he's not there, um, all, you guys are like, yeah, you know, I guess she's not, she's got him tied up somewhere. Yep. I've, I've met Pam. I'm pretty sure Chris sits down to pee. <laughs> what the fuck? Actually, man? that's a very German thing. They sits do that pisser. here. Yeah. Uh, in, in my area, it's a good insult. You call him a sits pisser. Really? Like I've been <laughs> at my work. No joke. Uh, this, I started in our production and I got promoted. And when I moved up, the sales manager at the time he pulled me into his office he goes this is an awkward conversation i'm like i love awkward let's do this he goes um we've noticed since you've been here that the toilet seat is always up i'm like it's a men's room who cares (laughs) well are you standing up to pee i was like yeah you're not no, we don't do that here i'm like the fuck like i thought he was fucking with me i'm like yeah okay dude i'm like whatever He's like, no, 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 we have to sit down to pee so we don't make a mess or anything. I'm like, yo, I'm not a fucking ant eater like you guys. So I don't have to, I'm not, I don't have any overspray. <laughs> so we're good. I was like, I'm not sitting down to pee. And he's just Dude, like, I would have pissed all over the floor the next day, like <laughs> everywhere. So he's like, oh, I pee on the toilet seat. I don't, I don't like, they always leave it uh, down. So, but I don't lift it up and I purposely piss all over it so (laughs) it's funny like i was like hey man i'm sorry but i am not sitting down to pee i was like that's weird like to be like it has nothing to do with like any kind of masculinity thing i'm fucking weird about that kind of stuff so i'm not if if i have to sit on a toilet seat around a bunch of scumbags like you guys there better be a good reason for it it's not going to be because i have to pee so (laughs) Yeah, I don't, man. I I don't know. Like I I don't do it, but I, you know, I wouldn't care if it has to do with masculinity or not. I just know that when I call people that, it definitely bothers them. Yeah, the masculine <laughs> side. So I mm-hmm. I definitely I have that like in my hip, you know, for like a quick draw if I need it. It's like all right, sits pisser, you know, and they're like, mm. now Chris, what's your what's your comeback usually to that? <laughs> with what with this? Yeah. 
I really don't give a fuck. Oh, you don't ki- you don't care if people call you a zits pisser? Okay, cool. No. Dude, he's man, you know, I really wish we were to, we would have recorded our situations a lot more in that unit cuz um you could have a whole reality show based on freaking Charlie Company and these Baden. Like we did shit everybody should have gone to jail for. We did shit like a lot of, <laughs> like officers should have been relieved for. And it's like in 10 years, I will expose it all because that's when my uh, statute of limitation is gone. Like I'm out, <laughs> I'm out. But because I had a secret clearance, I could definitely go to jail still. But dude, and, uh, I'm counting down. Was it when did I retire? 20 October 2021. So, yeah, 2031, it's game on, man. So, <laughs> uh, great. Yeah, but Chris, like, Chris, me and you what were together for a long time, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like from from the from the day that you showed up. Okay. I was when, already in the unit. But when we became civil affairs, you were you went did you go straight to my team when we stood up CA? And like I got Jeff as the freaking Dutch freaking lieutenant. No. No, yeah, because uh, Brian was there. No, I had yeah, like I some in, idiots on my team. I was in Brian's team. Oh, that's right. Before, before, uh, yeah, before. Oh, I that's right. You mistress. came to my team when I came back from <laughs> Afghanistan. That's right. Yeah, I was in okay. Brian's team before I fucked his mistress, and then I became like <laughs> his worst enemy. <laughs> that's awesome. So Chris has had a lot of abuse. I think he's. <laughs> I think he's used to it, man. Oh, it's, oh he's, so, he's, he's... <laughs> so, so talking about, <laughs> talking about like the stupid shit, right? Remember it's like Belladonna we went... status. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we went rappelling out at the, at the buildings out there, the training area? On our own with my stuff? Yeah. 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 So Paul tried to fucking send me to air assault school and goes, Oh, it's not that much higher. I'm like, bro, do you remember how I reacted with my fear of heights? When we went repelling out there, I couldn't move. I'm like, I know it's not like, how did you survive the, the Eagle tower <laughs> and all that? And basically bro, don't training? ask did that was, that was or did horrible. they just kick you off of no. it? No, they, they forced me to go down it. They let them like, do the women's took... version. no, <laughs> No, <laughs> no, that was, that was, that was horrible. Like it took forever. Yeah. But you still did it though. So yeah, you're, I still you're did not it. like it's petrified. Like... Air assaults. Yeah. That, that I could see that fucking you up, man. Cause um, they, they eventually go to out of a helicopter and that's yeah, different repelling. You. Yeah. Yeah. That's Paul, Paul's like, no, it's only it's only like a little bit higher than the second floor where we repelled. I'm like, get Yeah, but you know, how does Paul stupid. how does Paul know he's never been to air assault school? And he have nothing to kick off of. <laughs> this Yeah. <laughs> but no, like yeah. dude, Paul, I call Paul out all the time. I hope he's watching. But he I've seen his records, man. He hasn't been there. He's like, Well, my certificate got lost. It's like, okay, well. <laughs> call the school and get another one they can give you another one uh, he's yeah paul you, you've probably heard stories about paul huh this no mysterious I uh, badass dude he's like the, no. if, if if you could have a stolen valor guy actually, that actually yes, served <laughs> okay then you guys must have just not uh remember remember the guy that i told you uh dave made almost cry when we were playing gay chicken Okay. No. That's that's him. Okay. What, Paul? Dave, like, yeah, Paul, like, literally almost cried, was begging for me to stop, or no, he was begging me to drive faster to the unit so that he could get out of the vehicle. <laughs> so I actually let my foot off the gas to drive slower so that Dave could have more time with him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a nice boy. <laughs> I don't see Dave playing that game. Dave seems like the dude that's like he would he would tell you about his old his good old infantry days, no, no, no. but if you not tried that, that he'd fuck you up, man. Not 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 that Dave. 
Oh, Coleman. our Dave? Y'all's Dave? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about him. Like, the whole time he's like, God damn it, Chris, fucking drive. I'm like, okay, you want me to go slower? <laughs> <laughs> Just sit in first gear and cruise like in style. <laughs> that doesn't go any faster, man. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Oh, no, Paul, this guy, Paul, he's, we, we love him. He's a really cool dude. Yeah. Probably one of my favorite guys in that unit, but, um, he's, you know, he's, he's got a lot of stories where you're just like, I don't know, dude. <laughs> and, um, I wish I wish you guys should that's have him on like one that, day dude. and you guys should, you guys should have him on and have one of us come in like as a surprise. Cause ask him, <laughs> I can, I can send you secretly some stories to ask him about. Cause he's like used some of my stories and his stories. I've heard that. So you can get him to talk about some of that stuff and then I'll just pop in there, you know, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> he's done some shenanigans. Uh, oh, oh wow. hell no. I haven't heard that name in a while. <laughs> is he still in or is he done? No. So, so about that. Wait, guy. hold on. Hold on. Does, does, uh, Randall know yes. him? Yeah. yeah. So what you what you don't know, Randall, is this dude served a year without being in the military. What? I didn't hear that either. <laughs> they didn't pay him. He never fucking realized it. He went a whole year without technically being in the military. Holy shit. Uh, all of oh, a sudden man, that's he got like, like office space stuff. <laughs> he got he got like a fucking bill from CIF. And was trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. Then they looked at his ETS and it was like a year before. <laughs> Holy crap, man. <laughs> That's typical though. Like you tell me that I believe that. <laughs> like I wholeheart like knowing him, I wholeheartedly believe that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow Dude, bureaucracies it's no surprise at all man and that's all the army has become these days uh, is a useless dysfunctional bureaucracy but it's also they have it in their favor to take advantage of dum-dums <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah dude. If, if you owe them money it's coming out of your paycheck immediately if they owe you yep. money freaking good luck man call your congressman first step <laughs> Yep. <laughs> hey, speaking of that, Chris, you know, I uh, I finally used the congressman card. You know how, like, the, the average soldier, when they have an issue, it's like, oh, the sergeant said I'm out of shape and I got to get in, in shape, you know, so yeah. I'm going to freaking call my congressman. Like, that's all they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I finally called mine because um, my, uh, my Mississippi license, like, you know, when you get the German one, you got to surrender that one. So yeah. that one expired in, like, 2010. And um, when I'm working in the States, I can use my German license for like up to 30 days. Six yeah, months. exactly. Uh, depending if you on where get I'm an at. international license, I think it's good for six months. Right. But I didn't want to get an international one. I just go with my German one like I'm a tourist. Yeah. And so um, I did have an international one for a while, but I don't want to pay for it anymore. Um, so I was like, all right, well, I want to get my Mississippi license back. And um, I tried to do it through like our DMV, which government organizations totally useless and so i was like you know what all right so i sent an email to um our our dmv freaking boss I, uh, and then i cc'd like the the biloxi mayor and then the, the state governor which he has nothing to do with it that was kind of funny to see his response <laughs> and then uh, our district four freaking congressman palazzo and i'm just like fuck it i'm tagging everybody in this you know that's what i do now <laughs> just call for fire and I was like, my wife was like, what are you doing? Like, you don't talk to those people for that. And I'm like, well, I'm fucking gonna. It's been 20 years. I never used this card. I'm doing it. And so she's like, you're doing that over your driver's license? I'm like, yes. That's awesome. So uh, the next day, I get a response uh, yeah. from the, the governor's office. And they're like, yeah, we don't deal with this. So here's the Mississippi DMV guys. Talk to them. And then uh, a couple days later, I get a response from the representatives you know these guys they don't, they don't write shit themselves so i got like a secretary yeah. responding they they wanted a couple orders and re my retirement orders and went within a week man i got a login to the to my thing and they had updated my profile online on the dmv website to do it again and so Holy i paid shit. like 50 bucks for a 10-year license again and i'm like that's awesome yes. so yeah. not only not only did i re-get my 
And the reason I wanted to do Mississippi, not California, is because in Mississippi, you can still buy any gun possible. Yeah. So now I can buy <laughs> any freaking gun I want. And not that I would ever do it, but I could always drive it up to uh, other places to have it, you know. Yeah. But so um, now I got that and the Germans have my old expired American license. So now I have yep. freaking both for both sides. <laughs> and my wife is my wife is German. So she's just like, there's so much wrong with that. I'm like, you know oh, how I'm I, here. <laughs> um, I didn't realize not every state, uh, not every state will allow you to just exchange your license for a German one where you pay like, I don't know, I think I paid 32 euros for my German license. Mm -hmm. I had However, to take the uh, theoretical. I didn't test. have to take anything. I went in and I said, "Here is my Ohio driver's license. I want a German license." So they said, "Okay." They gave me everything except for like semi truck and motorcycle. So I'm like, "Cool," but I was like, and they're like, and I could see like they were they're like you know you're forfeiting like they wanted me to sign something where I was forfeiting my Ohio one. I said, "No, no, no." I said, "That's also a state." id card i was like i need that for when i go back and forth like when i go home to visit family that's my state id and they're like oh okay yep. we'll mail it back to you with your german license sure as shit i got my german license. they called me and said hey your your license is ready you can come pick it up i went there and my american one was in there so i had both of them i'm like fuck yeah Ooh. <laughs> and i didn't have to do anything i pay i got a german license and kept my american one for 32 euros so I got my, my my Ohio State license. I think that thing expired in like oh oh six. So one hour thirty minutes. Chris <laughs> admits to being from Ohio. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think that say. thing expired in two thousand six. But I had never gotten back there to go get a new one. So when I was in Florida, I just talked to my mom. I'm like, hey. Ohio supports the military as long as I have an active ID card that license is still good we go to Florida to the what the hell is it called the uh I can't remember what is it it's something like something like the tax office or something like that because we don't actually have a department yeah, yeah. of motor vehicles there went there explained that to them they're like oh yeah okay no problem we'll change it to Florida um Costs like, I think fifty fifty two dollars or something like that. Took my picture and now I'm good. I haven't had an active fucking stateside license in, in forever. <laughs> I I actually I stopped with the stateside license. Um, cause like in Ohio, it was good every four years, and I had to pay. Uh, I think it was like twenty six, twenty seven dollars every four years. In Ohio, yeah, it wasn't that much. Up in my county, it was. Hmm. That's that's cheap, man. <clears throat> so I uh, I stopped doing that because I get an international license. It's good for four years here. Like I just mm -hmm. go to the uh, the German DMV. I say, hey, I want a German license. I sit there and take the whole process takes not even ten minutes. I pay. I think it's not. It's less than twenty one euros, and then boom, I have an international license for four years. Mm -hmm. So that's we, what I do. We paid, we paid 80 euros for ours. We did, um, <clears throat> we, yeah, we did it at the rot house and yeah, you get the little paper freaking yeah, book thing I have with the, the pictures book in thing. it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was expensive for us and then Jesus it expired Christ. and I was like, man, eh, I'm not going to do it anymore. Wow. I go right. I go directly <clears throat> to the BM, to the DMV here and why yeah, do you I, need one though? If, if you go to the States, you can use your German have... license. Yeah, but still, like you don't trust the cops to. I don't trust them. Understand that? Yeah, <laughs> like that was our problem. I don't trust them. So, <laughs> like, I support the police, but there's a lot of dum dums everywhere. So not just the police. Like if I go somewhere and I need like something, it's like okay, hey, check this out. <laughs> like, and I have an American passport. Like I'm from here, <laughs> but um, no. So. <clears throat> Yeah, that's the route I go, and it's 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 worked out nice for me so far. I do it every yeah. time that we do it. Every time it expires, I just go and renew it right before, like a week or two before I go back, because I get it. You get it, like I don't know how it was for you, but I literally get it that day. Like I go, I fill it out, they stamp it, and I leave, and I have it. Uh, we we did it in like 
2009 or something. So yeah, yeah I'm sure it's gotten better by now, but it, it looked like the dude sewed it into the book, the picture by yeah. himself. We're like, <laughs> like, that's what we paid for. I could have done that. Yep. <laughs> Type some old German scripts, you know, from word. So my picture in there, make a little stamp. Yeah, we got it, man. Yep. It's like, that's what kills my wife is like, I've, I've learned over the years, over the decades that bureaucracies are awesome when you know how to manipulate them because yeah. at the end of the day no there's no checks and balances because nobody does their job so you just no. do what you want and just submit paperwork if it looks good it's going through you know yep. it's like mm -hmm. i'll do stuff like that and my wife's like okay so what if you get caught i'm like who's gonna catch me the one government worker that gives a shit about their job like is it yep. gonna happen man <laughs> It's like, okay, well, if I'm making a million dollars, yeah, the American IRS will come after me. But it's like, that's not the case. You know, we're talking yeah. about little silly things where they're like, oh, you got to go stand in line and pay this and do this. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fill it out myself and turn it into this guy. And, yep. you know, it's like, yep. nobody, <laughs> nobody checks this shit, man. It's yep. like, I, you know, and it's funny because I think the army for that, the army taught me all of that, how to just <laughs> manipulate the system. <laughs> like, they're like, well, Sergeant, you got to go get this form filled out. I'm like, I already got it filled out. I went up to Colonel so-and-so and they're like, oh, all right, thanks. And just skip like all the ranks and everything, <laughs> so, you know? Like, so basically you're comparing the army to like equivalent to, uh, you know, how prison it's basically college for criminals. So yeah. the army basically teaches you how to, nice. I like that. Dude, the arm the army is uh it's kindergarten for for fucking men. <laughs> like men who lost their way. Cause the like most soldiers, man, if if you took them out of the army right then, they would be lost and couldn't do a fucking thing. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, it is like if if you're kind of quick on your feet, you know, it's like um I, I learned an interesting fact. Like um I think it was uh 80 something percent of world war ii veterans came back and became uh small business owners yeah so the great majority of the of the you know the original boomers made their own businesses and at the same time about 80 percent of actual americans were small business owners so back then there was no big government all this bullshit everybody was a business owner cool um but the global war on terrorism um since 9 11 about four four to five million people have served any like in any aspect during that time and it's about like a no yeah four to five million have served and then it's about a four to five percent of those people are entrepreneur business owners wow and that's fucking terrible man because you look at the average private or specialist in the army they will dedicate 2000% of their energy into getting out of stuff. And they're super entrepreneurial because if you send them to go do a job, they'll find a thousand ways to do it better and faster. You know, it's like, if you say, all right, this is going to take you a day to do this, they'll fix, they'll get it done in an hour and then they'll go fuck off for the rest of the day. That's entrepreneurial, you know? Yeah. And then, and, and then like, you know, realizing they ain't fucking doing anything with that when they get out. It's like, yeah, man, like, like you, the army is fucked up because of fucked up people, but you could totally use it to your advantage. Mm -hmm. What I said about bureaucracies, it's like nobody does their job. Nobody cares. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> figure that out and use it to your advantage, man. It's like, it's like the German system about recycling and stuff. I go to the glass thing. I throw every color of glass, caps, oh, yeah. everything in the fucking container because I've seen the truck come pick up. You know, the Germans want to separate it white, green, and it's the same truck, yellow, and yeah. all it's the same fucking truck, man. So, yeah. And I used to get bitched at until I saw I was sitting there one day because our, our containers are like where our kids go to uh, Tornin, like the after school gymnastics. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there in the car waiting on my kids, and I, this German dude pulled up. And he was just throwing glass bottles in the paper container. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking, I'm a fuck the system guy, but I was like, wow, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's awesome. And he didn't give a shit, man. He was just one day, like, just fucking like bottles in there. And I rolled my window down. I thought he might have been, he was old. So I thought he might've been confused. So I was like, Hey, that's the wrong container. That's the paper container. And he, like, 
<laughs> it like shook his fist at me and you know talked about beating my ass and stuff and i was like all right cool man freedom awesome I can put yeah. it all in there. i don't care i thought i was helping the elderly but he took it as me being like a gestapo karen like correct and i was like Dude, i don't fucking care throw your fucking car parts in there man <laughs> my i have a neighbor he's also he's and he's 87 88 how their garbage cans work he just goes whatever comes for like whatever the first one that he comes to that's what he dumps everything in when it fills up he goes to the next one he doesn't look at what color <laughs> who cares and he just puts them out and like i've literally seen like the garbage man for like the yellow containers here like he'll put shit like that's supposed to be in the green container gives no fucks they literally go knock on his door and say, Hey, we're not going to take your garbage cans. He goes, do you know how much we pay for garbage? Fuck yourself. You're going to put that in your truck and leave right now. It is hilarious. <laughs> and that's, that's what he does. He doesn't care. He goes, it all goes to the same place. Why should I take my time and energy and then pay like, uh, $800 a quarter for this shit? No. There, there was a video uh, not too long ago on YouTube about, um, you know, the recycling and all that. And it's like um, it was it was a pretty biased documentary because they were basically saying, don't recycle anything. It's pointless. But it's really just it, sh it should have been taken as a lesson to, like, not just trust all the bureaucracies, you know, because it's like, you know, most people try. Yeah, we don't want to fucking burn the planet up and all that. We want to try to do good. But yeah. the bureaucracy ruins it all. Yep. So um, they were in China and they were just looking at labels of where stuff came from. And like a lot of it came from Germany. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, all right, well, you know, Americans, we get in trouble for dumping all our stuff everywhere and sending it to China. It's like, well, here's German stuff, Dutch stuff. And I always, you know, joke with my neighbors when they're talking shit. I'm like, it all goes to space or the ocean anyway. Like, you know, and I think like any video I do with that stuff, I'm going to do the Greta freaking how dare you thing in there. Cause it's like every time I'm fucking around doing stuff, like I'm just thinking like, how dare you? <laughs> One of my buddies, um, he's going to watch this eventually. He lives uh, around the Mannheim area and he rents from a German and he said his, his landlord has gone through his trash. Yeah and come to him and and told him how he needs to do stuff and i was what the i was fuck, talking about dude? like cleaning out his jars before he puts them in the fucking like the gelba sock thing and i'm like dude i would <laughs> like i would have so much fun with that there would be so many questionable <laughs> items oh, in there the next day. i would be i'd be jerking off in the condoms and just letting them lay there i'd be i'd be wiping my ass with like plastic bags and just putting them in there uh, dude i would i would definitely go to the nearest junk junkyard like on ramstein and get some mufflers and catalytic converters and throw them in his <laughs> fucking gelba sock just to have just to have the authorities call on him just, like dude you got dirty this diapers yeah they're like you got this uh Wow, what the fuck, man? Before we had fuel injection, a carburetor. Be like, you got yeah. a carburetor in your fucking Gelba sock, dude. Like, <laughs> put that in his, you know, so he gets written up for it. Uh, Have you guys read, uh, Chris? I told you about Kurt Schlichter, Kurt Schlichter, the 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 future freaking American collapse books. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about those, Bobby? No, I haven't. There's an author, Kurt Schlichter, I think he pronounces it. Um, he's an old uh, infantry officer, and he wrote like a series of books. Um, yeah, I read them from Matt. They're, they're fiction, but they're, and they're very entertaining just from the fictional side. But uh, he ended up kind of accidentally telling the, the future in a few of them. Yeah. Because he, he talks about like the kind of like the uh, American split down the road he's like okay if we keep going this way this is how america is going to split and oh, wow. obviously most of the coasts are blue and then the inner part is red you know that's kind of what most people see um and he does a bunch of different books like in who's the hero and all that there's like this old special forces guy he like goes into the blue territories to um extract like people to get them to the, the like the free states and so uh but What's funny is he called it so accurately. Like, I think The People's Republic, that's one of the most popular and entertaining books. And like I read it and I was 
I was reading it like 1984, you know, everybody's oh, wow. saying nowadays 1984 became a documentary. Yep. Well, that's kind of what the People's Republic turned into because this was before 2016. So I think before Trump even talked about running. So this was, you know, before the Russia collusion, like when people really started to stress out about stuff. And um, it's just funny, the references and, and the key terms he uses, because he's talking about like transgenderism in the, in the military and they take over the military and like the blue army is dysfunctional because all they care about is safe spaces and the LGBTQ, whatever, and whatever protected thing you are. So in the blue army, you don't get promoted on merit. Like it's not a meritocracy. You get promoted on your victim status. So every colonel and commander and all that making the decisions, it's just, they're in that position just because of their victim status. And this was in 2015. Wow. And so now that's what we're fucking dealing with. That's crazy. You know? And then another one was like, he, he goes into the blue territory and he's like, well, the coffee tastes like shit and it costs 200 bucks a cup. And he's like, it's cost 200 bucks because coffee is a climate crime and it's, it's refiltered coffee. So they reuse the grounds Jesus. over and over because cool. coffee is bad for the environment. And it's like, dude, we're coming to that, man. Like if we keep yeah. going with the silly leftist, stuff you know it's like coffee will be a climate crime and uh he, he's like yeah you gotta have uh ration cards for a steak like on post on bases we have to have yeah. rations card for coffee whiskey yeah. cigarettes you know and, and he's like yeah you gotta have a, a blue rations card for steak and the steak is ass and he's like i think it's rat meat and you know and it costs 200 bucks it's like dude that's, it. that's what we're going toward man that's and so crazy. it's funny mm -hmm. because you know, like I said, the books are fiction, and you I'll definitely have to check it out though. Seriously. Oh, they're fuck, they're really fun, man. Yeah. See, I like stuff like that. Like anything, like I really, I don't believe in a whole lot of conspiracy theories or shit like that. But I love buying it. Like I love reading about them. I love hearing about them. They're they're fascinating. It fascinates me, and it just. It, it the, I think for me, like, I see it from, like, a comedical point of view because, like, I know people that are, like, close to me in this life that are just losing their shit because to them this is reality. You know what I mean? And it's, like, stuff like that. Oh, I would love to read that. Yeah, and they're pretty cheap, man. You can get the ebooks on Amazon, you know, for, like, two bucks or whatever for a oh, Kindle. I'm on it. Like, I'll have to look at it. Yeah, and the... um. Well, I, I was, you know, you guys reminded me of it because I was thinking about just uh, the the satire involved with all this like recycling and all that, you know, like he he wrote these books years ago before these these this craziness happened. Mm -hmm. And so he I've, I've talked to him on Twitter and he's basically like, I just thought about the craziest thing I could think of and put that in the book. And it's like, well, now that's kind of happening, dude. So, you know, it's like you predicted the future. That's crazy. Chris, I just saw our latest uh, transgender slides for the army. I'm going to have to figure out how to work that into some videos without um, getting shot. Be careful. Uh, does Chris, do you guys all like, does your unit know Chris's uh, pronouns? <laughs> Chris, you're muted. We don't hear you. Well, Jew is still not protected in the army. So, Thank God. <laughs> but I don't know. Like, uh, people called Chris uh, Manning a bunch of times because he kind of looked like him before the sex change. Oh, uh, God damn it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> now we hear you. There you go. No. Uh, um, do you remember when we sat through through that fucking transgender brief where they're like, oh, well, you have to accept it? Like, yeah, if anyone, like, walks into the bathroom behind my daughter and that person has a beard still, um, that's not happening. Like, that, I will not accept that. It does not matter. Well, have you guys seen the damn uh, swimmer in, in college? Yes, from that's Yale. Crushing people? Yeah. Here's yeah. the funny thing about that is they were a mediocre swimmer in the men's. And then, uh, you know, did a, you know, transitioned and just started murdering mm -hmm. everybody. 
Right. Yeah. He, and it's he not could, like he by a little bit. It's by like men. a fucking length of a pool. Yeah. Like yeah. And, a lot and, of the, that and the girls and he showers with the girls and walks around fucking naked, you know, because he identifies as them. But cool. But they they can't even say anything about it without no. fucking getting in trouble. And that's the thing. Yep. Take that exact situation, right? And you put it a couple generations prior to ours. Like, say, our grandparents. Let that shit. You think that shit will fly back then? Dude, you'd get beaten with ho- rubber hoses or I was just about to say that. swimming yeah. with the fishes or something. Exactly. And it's, and it's not even because of your choice and gender. It's because you force people to fucking adapt to you, you know? That's uh, that's what's fucking that's what's weird, man. It's like um, I was watching. Uh, I think it was Jordan Peterson. He had this lady on. She was a psychologist. And um, she um, was talking about the amount of like transgender, like people, teenagers identifying as this stuff. And the, it, the mm-hmm. rates have skyrocketed. Oh, it's insane. Stuff. And yeah. she said, like, when they actually do a psychological intervention, they're like, all right, there's no dysphoria here. It's just people hanging out with their girlfriends thinking they might be different because that's what kids do. Yep. You know, it's like, that's that's freaky, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I mean, you think back to our childhood, Chris never, he didn't transition. So, I mean, you what know, people fuck? go through, everybody experiments, and then they eventually <laughs> find themselves. You can't expect to know uh, what you are or who you are when you're 10, 11 years old, as far as that goes. Uh, you got to live life a little bit before you can say, oh, yeah, this makes sense. Do you remember the, the one guy Dude, that kids, swore kids can't drink, down? Kids can't vote, and kids can't buy guns. So, right. But we can for a let reason, them, man. Yeah, but we can let them identify as whatever and dictate our yeah. every move in life. Uh, Dude, they were talking about them? letting um sixteen year old kids, uh, sixteen year olds, be the voting age in California. That's insane. I, I haven't yeah, kept up with it, but it's like. Dude, if I had my way, like I said about men, the voting age would be like fucking 35 or something because you don't yeah, know yeah. anything about life until you're older. <laughs> <laughs> like, and you should get points for voting. It's like 35, all right, one point is a man. 35 was two kids? Yeah, you get two points, you know, because you, you've experienced some shit. But it's like 18 years old, dumbass dude. Like, no, you don't know anything, man. We don't fucking care what you have to say. <laughs> and I was one of those guys, so I fucking could totally admit it. I didn't know yeah. a fucking thing, man. Yeah, exactly. But you were ready to run. You know, you had the world by the balls. Oh, yeah. I knew everything, and I was exactly. like fucking like, uh, immortal. <laughs> yeah. Like my, dad would t- like, my dad would tell me stuff. He's like, man, you're stepping out of line. It's like, fuck you, cunt. You don't know what you're talking about. I got this. <laughs> I did not have this, <laughs> you know, well, that's, that's one reason to stay in shape, man. Cause when I was, uh, my last year in high school, I was 17. Cause I was an early kid. Um, and my dad was drunk as fuck and, um, wanted, he wanted to fuck with me and try to fight me. And, um, I fucked him up, you know, but it, I want to stay strong and in shape because when my son is 18 and bows up to me, I want to fucking destroy him. Oh so yeah. He knows that he's not the fucking boss yet, you know. Yep. It's like he might be bigger and stronger than me, but I'll have the wisdom and as long as I'm not in a wheelchair, I'll fucking I'll be able to take him on, you know. I tried that with my dad too. All of a you sudden, probably tried that quick. with his son too that towers over <laughs> you. <laughs> he put he put his foot up on my shoulder and I'm just looking at him right before I joined the military. I'm like, "All right, that's it." because <laughs> at that point my dad had this big ass belly and to see that he was still that fucking flexible i'm like no no i'm not gonna push this envelope because i know i'm gonna fucking lose <laughs> uh so we're gonna actually stop recording but we'll still stream live um randall thanks for stopping on the podcast stick around uh your thing and check him out on you're mainly on instagram right now right i haven't i don't think i've seen instagram you on facebook in a while YouTube. uh 
Well, kind of both Instagram and YouTube. <laughs> it's uh grunt proof. Yeah. YouTube and Instagram and then uh Randall actual for the veteran stuff on and, both channels and check out his new web series. Yeah. The survival games that airs tonight at freaking two in the morning, German time, seven o'clock central standard time, America. Definitely check it out. <laughs> It'll be very interesting. Sounds awesome. Um, so you guys, thanks for stopping on this week. Uh, you know where to find us. Check out Randall at Grump Proof. And we'll see y'all next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.